Absolutely. Well, guys, we'll get going. Thanks for your time this evening. Uh, Josh, Ali, uh, and Noxie. Is it Noxie? Mr Mulholland, Simon. Are we on duty, off duty tonight, Nox? Uh, it's your call. It's your call. I'm, I'm heading <laughs> anyway, so. I feel like I'm letting you down by not wearing a shirt and tie. So, uh, for no. the purpose of um, the webinar, it will slip out, and I know I'm terrible with it and very informal, but I'll go Noxy. But um, just for people tonight, just to, to welcome Simon Noxy, uh, he is, if you don't know, the director of rugby of Sedbury School Football Club and a legend of a man uh, doing things with the school football club that, you know, we could have only ever dream dreamt of. Uh, plenty and plenty of boys going on to big and incredible things. But I think below that even, we've just got boys that love playing in the jersey. And, mate, I'm delighted that you've joined us tonight to help grill these two boys here um, and see what they're up to so they can give us some information. Just talking about information and just, you know, the reason for these webinars and, and particularly this one, I hope, I hope Noxie and I can give everyone who is in attendance a bit of a nudge. So we're looking at, uh, of course, aspiring rugby players, any rugby players, uh, mini juniors, seniors, uh, just to pick up on some of the experiences that Josh and Ali have had and share some information to keep their sort of love for the game burning. We'll give you some nudges around coaching. So, you know, there'll be lots of coaches on here as well that'll just be thinking what makes these boys tick? How can we do things a little bit differently or think about some stuff that we're doing? And of course, you know, the, the parents that support all that. So hopefully we can give parents, coaches and aspiring players a little bit of a nudge into, into your world and just to see how we can react from there. Uh, the chat room as normal, please. Last week was incredible. I couldn't keep on top of it. Uh, Nox is in charge this week because he'll do a much better job than I will of the chat room. Uh, <laughs> and um, as ever, we'll send a copy and recording out of this. And if we don't get to answer all your questions, we will try and catch that up at a later date with some some other stuff. Uh, Nox, over to you. I think it's your duty to introduce the boys tonight on, on tonight's webinar. So fire away, buddy. No problem. And th thanks, uh, first of all, for having me. So, um, yeah, real pleasure to, to be able to uh, introduce uh, both Ali and, and Josh. So, Ali, uh, current Saracen uh, and obviously England squad uh, member, uh, and Josh, current uh, Exeter Chief, uh, and has been an apprentice in the England squads as well. And just uh, one little stat that came up, I was thinking about this this afternoon, uh, about both these these young men and, and great Sibergians and legends of the, the SSFC, both were named uh, National Super 10s player of the tournament, both in their lower six. So uh, that doesn't happen very often, but uh, we stay for you there as well. Noxie, that is incredible. So we've watched some of the greatest players in the country play in the Sedba 10s, and for two boys to get it in the lower six, so the, the player of the tournament in the lower six, what things were you, or with because it was voted by all of the coaches, so all the coaches at the tens voted for their player of the tournament. So let's let's embarrass them a little bit. What what were they seeing, and what led them to sort of nominate Ali and Josh as, as player of the tournament? Oh, good question. Um, I think I think if I speak about both of them a little bit similar here. Um, both were outstanding on attack. Uh, I think whether you're a, a player. An opposition player, I guess, in particular, a spectator, um, a coach, and a neutral coach. Whenever either of them got fingers on the ball or touched the ball, there was that excitement factor. And I think, um, you know, it's nice to know from from my coaching that they could go the length of the field at any any time, and just so dangerous. And I think Ali, in particular, um, played a, in the team position for us and just ran the show. He, he was such a threat on the ball and also putting others away around him in space and. And Hodgie just finished everything. Uh, any kind of one-on-one, -on -one, that, that was his. And uh, he was outstanding. So, yeah, look, two, two, two great attackers, that's for sure. Yeah, interesting as well. Like, I could talk all day about both of their attack. Exciting, X-factor. Uh, and one thing that I only ever dreamt of was pace. But <laughs> flip it flip it on his head. Actually, for two, for two slight lads, loved a bit of a tackle, loved a bit of a shoulder, getting stuck in, in D. Uh, which is really pleasing to see. Like, you know, your technique and your confidence was was brilliant. So, you know, you, you were always attritional in whether you were carrying or, or defending. So a bit of everything. And, and of course, football skills. So I think I've, I think I've seen 
you two dribble the ball on a rugby pitch more than any of the players ever. Football come naturally to both of you, Ali? Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I, took, I had a United shirt that sat up there, but I took it down in case it offended anyone. So it's just sat on my bed at the moment. But yeah, football, definitely love a football. So, yeah. Hodgie, you grew up with a football, not a rugby ball? Yeah, football from day one. Uh, football right until the end of my school years. So, yeah, really enjoy it. Knox, over to you. Kick off, mate. OK, so so questions, guys, to start with. And I'll, I'll go... Um, I'll go to you, Ali, first if I can. So um, I just want to start with, with obviously the England camp and that experience you had there. So what sort of coach um, had the biggest influence on you or the impact on you during your, your time in the camp? Um, I think I think it's an obvious one, but I think for me, Eddie was like pretty special in terms of I always respond well to coaches that kind of get to know you on like a personal level as well. And I think uh, yeah, for, like from day one, like it was immediate, like pretty obvious to see that he wanted to get to know you as a person. Like, you know, I found out he'd done like background checks on, you know, wrong people that you never even think would have done that to find out what kind of person I was. And I think, you know, he immediately knew how to get the best out of me. Um, and then I think as well as Eddie as well, I think Simon Amor, who's the backs coach and attack coach, um, again, just sat me down and literally, I think I was only in camp for about five minutes, so still was like a disorientated and stuff, sat me down straight away and just had a chat about, you know, asking really kind of in-depth questions, both personal and rugby-wise, that just got you thinking. And, you know, at the time I was a bit like, well, why do they want to know this? But again, that came out in, in the training sessions later on and they kind of knew what worked for me and what didn't and what I was trying to get out of it and stuff. And I think, yeah, both of those two were, were really good for me. Brilliant. Brilliant. And Josh, just slightly different question for you, but but related. Um, you know, how did you find out about obviously being an apprentice and, and being named in those squads? How did you find out about that sort of process? Uh, so it all came a bit quick, really. A uh, bit short, but it was on release day. I just saw my name at the bottom of the sheet, and I was just, yeah, that was how I found out. It was pretty pretty random. Uh, made a Newcastle debut that weekend before, so I wasn't really expecting anything. To be honest, I didn't even know when it was getting announced. Um, but I saw the sheet and I saw that I was in it and I was over the moon. Who was the, who was the first person you told, Hodgie? Uh, I think it was my mum and dad. Yeah, straight on the phone. Was yeah. there tears in the Hodge household? There wasn't tears, no. We were quite, we're quite strong together. Oh, we're a good bunch. Mate, uh, there was tears in my household when I saw your name. <laughs> really? Oh, proud of you. And Noxie. Oh. We, we were cuddling it out in Sedba. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, good stuff. Mate, Hodge, just, just sticking with that, so it's a, it's a whirlwind thing. So, you know, how do you then prepare for something like that? So did you not get an inkling from your club or from anyone that you might be you might be in the mix with a shout? Um, not really, no. Um, I was obviously, I was in 20s camps earlier on. Um, and I was, I was just chatting to a few coaches there and they were just asking how, how everything was going, didn't really have anything about know anything about anything really. I was just cracking on my twenties, so now I knew nothing until until the release day. Yeah, your twenties performance and Knox, you'll remember his twenties performance around. Um, you know, you, you set the tournament alight, really. So you know, was, was you one of the leading point scorers in the competition, if not the leading point scorer? Uh, I, was, I was leading at the World Cup. Yeah. Yeah, good man. So you, you were definitely on the radar and doing some really good stuff. But I imagine that would have been a hell of a shift from sort of. You have you have an idea around twenties. You're in the mix. You're in the squad. You're in the team. You're performing. You know you'll be in, and then to make that huge step up, or was it a huge step up? It, it was. You, you knew that mistakes. You didn't see them very often there. Um, I didn't get as long as I I could because I had to go back to twenties camp. But I spent a, a week in Portugal, which uh, led to a couple of like walkthrough days and a few little bits of training days. Not much, but. Um, yeah, you just realise like the step up in like no mistakes. How a lot of the players are happy to be there, but they want to get better there. They're not just happy to be there. Um, they're always pushing each other and trying to be the best out of each other. So yeah, it was, it was a really good like good bunch of boys. Yeah, it's a tough. There's a tough tough atmosphere though because you know you're an attacking adventurous rugby player. High risk, high reward. Not always high risk, but there's an element of your play that would be like that. You want to impress. People don't want to make mistakes but they're all pushing to get better. Yeah, 
so how did you did, did you did you feel like you could express yourself? Could you feel like you could be Josh Hodge when you were there? Yeah, I always try and be Josh Hodge. Um, I always do what I do. Um, I think one of the main things that I enjoyed about the camp was being quite close to Eddie and Eddie. Eddie was saying, just just be you. You know what you're good at. Just do the things that you do and just back yourself and just be confident. And I think that's always the thing that I look into now is just, just being confident because, yeah. Yeah, because you know you've got talent and, and you've got to go and stretch it and challenge it away. Ali, I wonder, just going, obviously just going back to Ali just for just for a second, when you're talking a little bit about the coaches and they, they sit down and get to know you on a personal level as well as a rugby level. How, how did that lend itself to you in being able to perform in your training camps? Sorry, me? Yeah. Yeah, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, similar, like, similar, like I said, I think similar to, to Haji, I think Eddie was with me, just similar kind of thing. Like he was just giving me loads of confidence, basically, which I think at a time, just come back from injury. I think, again, like Haji had only played kind of one game. It's a bit unexpected and, you know, um, going in there and just basically being told just kind of, take the shackles off and just just go for it basically um was something that like really well just that's why I've always played rugby basically to just have a, have a go and and enjoy it and I think that was that was my experience there um and again that came from you know having that chat beforehand because initially you know I can imagine the situation where going in and hadn't spoke to Eddie or you know that kind of thing and it was just like here we go here we're training you know you wouldn't know how to react act. like it's a completely different that environment um, but having those chats beforehand just kind of, well, made me feel a bit a lot freer and, and going into training. So it's important. It's really important, and that's you know the soft skills of coaching. And Knox, before I hand back over to you, I just want the boys to embarrass you a little bit. Uh, and this is totally off the cuff, by the way, and that, that's just how I'll, I'll play it. If you're talking so highly of Eddie, I assume that that's Eddie Jones. Um, but I know a fellow called Simon Mulholland and I love watching his teams play. If you could sum up Noxie's coaching in one word, what would you use, Hodgie? The best. That's two, but I'll give you that. Yeah, but it counts as one. Counts as one, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Ali... I, think, I think similar, just like freedom. I think, you know, like you just, you're just playing what, well, it's more than one word, but yeah, I'll go with freedom and not just the play. That's <laughs> <laughs> good. Thanks. Not so to you, mate. Sorry. So you have got a shade of red. I have, I have, I have. No, thank you. That's really nice. Um, yeah, just, uh, Ellie, just to, to expand on, on, on the last question, but, you know, obviously you go into a camp, um, it, it's scattered with, with superstars, you know, um, some very settled players, some, some outstanding players. Um, you know, was there anyone in particular, any sort of senior player or, or players that really helped you um, throughout the camp? Um, so a big one for me going in and, you know, from these chats with the coaches and like performance staff again was like trying to learn not just in terms of rugby wise, but in, in terms of like my body and recovery and that kind of thing. And I think um, I was kind of paired up with Johnny May um, in camp, which was like the most beneficial thing that I think I've had in my whole career in terms of as a mentor, just just kind of even just chats over dinner or that kind of thing, just to try and learn how he works and what works for him. Um, I mean, obviously we did like similar kind of players, but you know, different kind of athletes. So it's about taking bits from him and, and, and applying them to me kind of thing. Um, so that was one person, but I think, you know, like, again, one thing I'd say is that Eddie's massive on like, that culture. So in terms of everyone is encouraged to sit next to her and speak to everyone else basically and get to know each other. And that's one thing I was surprised about because obviously, you know, as clubs at club level, you see these other teams as rivals and you might have your opinions of certain players and, you know, what, but then actually meet them in person and everyone's there to try and basically, you know, get the best out of each other. Um, so that was really good to just kind of have that um, on and off the field and everyone was just helping you out, which which was really good. But I think, yeah, in particular, uh, Johnny was just, just so good to sit down and have a chat with. So that was good. Yeah, it's interesting that uh, Ellie, he's clearly a really a nice guy, I think. Because um, obviously you had a, a picked up a bit of a knee injury and uh, towards the end of your upper six, didn't you? And um, I believe I'm right in saying he had an ACL, I think, very early on. Yeah. Um, and he'd spoken also, I think, to Cameron Redpath, who also picked up with an injury. And I think he's been very influential to a lot of young players. Which is, which is yeah, he's really helpful. Again, yeah. you, you know, sometimes you feel like you're bothering people with like pointless questions, but he was someone that, you know, would completely, you know, well, you're not bothering him at all. It's literally like he's trying to help you out. and 
get the best out of you um, and just answer any questions, which is which is really really good for me. So. Brilliant, brilliant. And and Hodgie and, and your sort of short time within the, within the camp was anyone that, that really helped you? Uh, so for me, we we're, were in Portugal. So I had a, a house with that was had George Ford in it. And for me, he was a he was one like touch on what Ali said about recovery and looking after your body and what you put in your body, as in food wise and um, just that different outlook that you probably don't see in your schoolboy days. You just want to play, even if you had an injury like I did. I just played through it because I just wanted to play rugby. But it's the fact that you got to look after your body as well to then perform. And I think George Ford in that case, he uh, helped me out quite a bit. And obviously rooming, rooming with him as well. Um, you know, I was speaking to him 24-7 for a week and he was just offloading so many, so much good information. It was just easy to take on board. Fantastic. Good, good. Yeah, great, great answers. Ali, just go back to your little bit away there because we, we chatted a while back actually about that transition from Saris to England camp. And obviously you've got like an abundance of, of talent at Saris that, you know, would have helped you sort of transition into into the England camp. Did did any of them boys sort of help you, support you? Yeah, definitely. I think another one that, yeah, I did mention earlier, Elliot Daly was so helpful. It's obviously similar kind of positions and, you know, we did a lot of the stuff together. So they have like early morning gym and that kind of thing. Um, and again, like he, he was so beneficial to have there. And again, like, you know, I think the same with, with Hodgie when you're in there, like, you know, not just your own club, but other clubs were, were trying to help you out. But obviously it does help, you know, I think there was eight other boys in camp with me at that point um, from Saris. So that, that was massive. And, you know, it makes things a bit easier when you're walking in um, and just, you know, you've got a few friendly places to say hi to. So. Yeah, cool. I mean, just, just quickly, just on totally off piece because the chat bar is going well and I'll jump across to that in, in a second. But uh, you found out about your first call up in front of all the boys, did you not? Me? Yeah. Uh, it, was a, it was a bit of a weird one. So I'd got an email, um, which was like outlining the dates for autumn. And I was just a bit like, well, I was obviously amazed, but I was just kind of like, oh, that's a bit weird. But didn't really think anything of it. I like, didn't think there was any chance. And then, yeah, we played Bath and we had like our end of season kind of thing. And then the group chat was made for the for the camp and I was on it. And I hadn't checked my phone. And then I think it was, I think it was Jamie George came over. I was like, mate, what, what are you doing on this? Obviously taking it, like having a joke. But he's like, what are you doing on this? Like, how, who you, like have you proud to go into this? But um, so, yeah, that was a bit of a weird one. Like, yeah, just suddenly was like, oh, okay. Um, I've been to camp tomorrow morning. So that was... A bit of a similar to Hodgie, a bit of a shock. Um, but yeah, no, still a really nice experience. Oh, cool. Mate, Knox, I'm going to fire a question from the chat box to you, actually. Um, and then we'll go to, to Hodgie and Ali to give them some thinking time. Um, but it was about uh, mentoring. So through school, mentoring. So Ali, Josh, uh, Ali, you were Bowdoin Rugby Club. Um, Hodgie, you were Vale of Loon and Kirby Lonsdale for a little while. And talk about roles of mentors, or did you have any mentors through club or through school? But Knox, do you want to just talk a little bit about sort of the setup at school around mentorship and, and what we get the lads to do? Yeah, so we, we're pretty big on this in terms of, um, well, look, it's not just about the first team. And, and the first team do get a lot of plaudits, and, and rightly so, you know, that we are, we are pretty strong. And, um, we do have success, but um, look, it's about every young player in the ECFC and the journey, and we look at you know, the likes of Ali and, and Josh, in particular as upper six players, look, they've got a real duty to help out these younger guys in the, in the club and uh, make make time of, to be available for them to talk and to talk about rugby, to talk about school, and you know, they're, they're role models. Um, and, and look, they are... Uh, these first team jerseys, they come and go, but the, the young young boys coming out through the club will always be coming up the system. So it's um, yeah, really important that we that we drive that uh, with the older players. You know, we, we do some great stuff with the older guys giving giving our player of the week ties and just making generally time to be available to these young players and uh, give them any kind of advice they can. It's, uh, it's a huge part of the CCC and a very special part of the CCC. You know, Josh, Ellie, all these guys do a great job. Really proud. Yeah, good stuff. And then go back to um, Hodgie and Ali, uh, you know, mentorship. So how did you find mentorship through your club and through school? What, what did that mean to you, Hodgie? Um, 
I think through school, you always just used to look up to those those first team boys. Obviously, I had Ali in my house. He was head of my house. You know, he's always a good guy to look up to. Yeah, pole house. Um, Present. Yeah. Um, you know, it's always good to see see your fellow fellow mates do really well on the pitch and you just always want to be in that in their footsteps when you when you grow up into that final year. So I think that was that for my schools. Um and then for club at the moment I'm obviously looking up with uh, Stuart Hogg. Uh, he's obviously a, a big name in the rugby world right now and you know tra- learning learning off him is a big thing. Um and taking so much on board when I'm not playing is just yeah it's a great guy to learn off. Stuff, Ali. And it, Ali, um, talk about was it was the anybody from sort of like your club from from Bowden before you went professional was in? I know the one person that you're going to mention. Yeah, and yeah I, I, I sort of want to hear about the character and what made that sort of relationship special. Yeah, reason reason I'm probably still playing rugby to be honest. Well, it started playing rugby um, was Tony Bennett. So again, like you know, just made me fall in love with the game. And again, it was all about fun and you know that free that word freedom again just just kind of like springs to mind. It was you know, play what you see and, and just enjoy, enjoy every moment. And um, I think that's, they're, they're the people that I've, well, in terms of coaching wise, they're the ones that I've always responded to best. Um, and yeah, that's, that's when it came down. I think it went down to Saturdays was rugby and Sundays was football. And then obviously Sundays, rugby moved to Sundays and I had to make that decision. And I think dad would have probably slapped me if I'd have picked football. But <laughs> the main reason I picked rugby was obviously because um, of that enjoyment on a, on a Sunday with Tony. So, yeah, again, just uh, yeah, someone that really inspired me. And then, yeah, moving on to school, it was Noxy and um, obviously yourself, you know, wangling me into going to Sebba. Um, but yeah, no, it was, um, you know, like, yeah, again, you two guys just, again, just that that knowing me as an individual and, you know, fall in love with the game and, and continue to, to, to play and enjoy it. Um, and then at club-wise, you know, there's, again, like people like Elliot Daly, I think over the years, has helped well the year he's been here has been amazing and then um had Liam Williams before that and David Strattel as well so again different I think the main thing is like you know it doesn't have to be someone that's identical to you in terms of how you play or but you know just learning different aspects and trying to apply them to your game is something that in terms of having a player mentor is something that really is beneficial so something that's screaming out to me here about both of you guys is that appetite to learn so, you know, the appetite to find out some information. So how do I get better? What makes me better? What makes me tip? So, you know, for any young players out there, you know, the the journey and the learning is shared and, and probably similar to coaching as well. You know, with me and Noxy, we agree and we disagree on some coaching stuff, but we share some stuff and we get better and we take each other's opinion on board and, and, and we crack on and, and try to just keep searching for those extra gains. So I think that's a, a really huge trait around um getting better you know keep an open mindset keep smiling keep happy uh, and keep asking lots of questions which is which is really good just before we move away from the england stuff in a minute there's there's one or two more questions but i think my question would be and it's something to get them excited was you know did you have any amazing magic moments uh in camp did you come away with thinking like that has to be one of the greatest moments or greatest feelings ever scoring a try saving a try Making any tackles on any big lads? Hodgie, um, anything from you? Ali, you've got loads, so just slow down. No, no, let let Hodgie get a breath in. <laughs> um, as I said before, I didn't really get too many days training. It was mainly like just you're learning into the basics. As I, as I left, they started their preparation for the France week. So it wasn't really anything that comes to mind that we did in training that I can did amazingly, but... Yeah, I don't really. I, I think the feat of just being there, mate, is pretty amazing. And, and I think you're underplaying it slightly, which Noxie would love. But I love shouting from the rooftops, as everyone knows. So, Ali, come on, give us something. No, no, no. My, I was going to say mine's just a funny story because mine was just completely by accident and it shouldn't have, that shouldn't have happened. But like, so they don't. So obviously, the aerial contest is massive. Um, at any like in professional rugby, basically. But like in training, they don't. England especially on certain days you don't go live in the air so it's like whoever's kicked it to the other team they keep it um and Owen so Owen was at 10 and he, he hadn't told me this and was just saying like we put a box kick up and was just like Ali go get it go get it so I've just sprinted and, and jumped in the air and like collided with Johnny May but somehow caught the ball um 
and I think Simon Amor went mental at me, like screaming at me, like, what are you doing? Like, and then to, and Eddie had a go at me as well. But then afterwards, like Eddie was like, mate, that was that was class. Like, um, that's what we that's what we like. And but then so I, yeah, at the time I was like, I've just like just killed killed myself with that with that with that move. But I actually worked out all right. But yeah, that's that's the only one I could think of. So knocks any more for the boys on the England stuff? Uh, no, look. Yeah, no, I think I think we've covered it there. I, I, I'm happy with that. I, I guess, oh look, I guess that first. If I just go into one thing, actually, uh, first session, first day. You know, what were the nerves like in that? Just before that first one. Um, well, I think I was all, I was fine. I think because I'd spoke to Eddie beforehand, he was like, "Oh, just just be confident in what you do. Just play your game. Uh, just listen to the players around you. And they'll they'll." Like control you and put you where you need to be if you don't know, obviously with all that and the structure and stuff. Um, but I was, I was all right. I was, I was looking forward to it. I wanted to get out there, get training. Yeah, you're the most horizontal man in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie, how are you? Uh, I was pretty nervous. Yeah, I was. Um, so we were at the Lensbury, so it's quite a long walk down to the pitch because we're in this bubble. So it was like a five minute walk down and. You know, that walk down was just, I was petrified basically in terms of what, what could happen and what was going to happen. But then did all the warm up and everything. And the first thing we did was a game of Frisbee. Um, and again, like that, at that point, I was just like, you know what, this is just fun. Like, and then at that point, it was just all nerves gone. So, um, yeah, no, I think that, that's usually the way I am anyway. Like before games, it's horrible. But then as soon as you start the warm up, it's, it's all good and you should enjoy it. So. Brilliant. And just to add to that, boys, just an interesting one that, that I've thought of, but. You know, we do obviously do a lot of game-based training at Sedba and, you know, during your time here, everything's revolved around those games. Like, do you feel that's helped you sort of go into the professional game or international game? You know, obviously with everything being decision-making based here and uh, quick thinking, uh, a lot of spatial awareness stuff. Do you think that's helped you throughout your pro career? Yeah, I, I'd say so. I think, you know, it's easy to go, I think you're going to do 15 on 15 or, that kind of training and it, obviously there's an element of that which you need to get in but I think well the sessions I've most enjoyed throughout whether it was with Fletch at like 18s or 16s kind of thing or with with, with you at Sebba or even with Duffy back in uh, I think it was East Trafford or whatever it was back in the day like it was those games where you know like it's just different different kind of stimulus like decision making and stuff and I think you know that's the stuff that goes take you take into games and you know when you're in that just enjoying enjoyable moment and that and obviously you need you need the element of you know 15 on 15 and, and get that structure and that kind of thing but um yeah no I think like you said I think yeah it's definitely helped me to have, having those those this game based game uh, training so Nox I've got one final one for the boys and it was we, we discussed this earlier and it's almost one of those questions that should we ask shouldn't we ask but I loved um the cricket boys Harry Brook and George Hill's responses to it but I'm going to shape this question in, in the best possible way for you. What's going to stop you getting a cap for England, Ali? Um, well, yeah, there's a lot of things, but that, I think the main one for me, I think having been in camp and oh, I'm before all that in terms of it, like my body and that kind of thing, I think injury-wise is something that I need to just address and get my body right um, and, and, you know, be playing as much rugby as, as I can and, and enjoying that rugby. And I think, you know, if what happens after that is, what, is whatever happens and, you know, that would be the dream to, to get a cap. Um, but, you know, I think the, the thing I can control is, you know, like Hodgie mentioned earlier, like what goes into my body recovery and all that kind of thing and, and, and get a good run of games, basically. Um, that's the, that's the, the short-term and long-term plan for me, I think. Hodgie? I think for me, it's just uh, fine-tuning the, the skills. I, think I just need to get myself on that pitch. As soon as I, I get myself on the pitch, I feel like I'll put myself in situations and, and gain experience and then learn from the experiences. I think I'm, I'm sort of a player that, that learns from the game scenarios uh, more than anything. Um, so I think as soon as I get that game time, um, keep working hard and training for that, and then hopefully that will come and then hopefully get a consistent bunch of games and then, yeah. Yeah, and I hope you take this the right way as well. Is that you're both still very fresh and young, still learning lots, still getting better. Super in, intelligent, exciting uh, X Factor rugby players that you know can set a pitch alive. So good luck on the England stuff, uh, Noxie and I. 
everyone at, at said, but and Bowden and Bale of Loon and uh, Kirby will be keeping eyes open for you along the way. Knox, we, we'll get stuck into this chat bar um, in the next five or ten minutes, but if we just talk about some new club stuff, existing club stuff, um, we'll do five or ten minutes and then get into the question bar. So keep, keep the questions coming in, we'll get through them. Do you want to kick off the club stuff, Knox? Yeah, so so Ellie just obviously with Saracens, um, current Saracen. Yeah, current, um, yeah. <laughs> possibly a, a move at the end of the season? Yeah, so uh, moving up to Wasps um, in June, June, July. So, yeah, I'm not excited for that. Should be good. Fantastic. And then just at the moment, so obviously in the championship with Saracens and looking to get some, some game time coming up, um, obviously back from injury. How are you feeling? Any sort of starts on the horizon, do you think? Uh, yeah, no, feeling good. So um, we've got the Trail Finders Cup at the moment. So that's um, all the only confirmed fixtures we've got at the moment, which is a bit depressing. But hopefully that, that stuff sorts itself out in terms of championship season. Um, so, yeah, hopefully get the game either this weekend or next weekend. And then, you know, on, on from there. That's the plan. So all good. Brilliant. Good. And Hodgy, how's everything going at Exeter? Uh, it's really good. Yeah, uh, really enjoying it. Uh, it's a great, great bunch of lads, and it's like a big family, really. Everyone's so close together. They've, they've come a long way before me, and they're, yeah, they're doing really, really well. Um, luckily enough to join, join towards the end of the last season and contributing training towards that the, the double champs. You know, it was, it was a big, big thing, and it was. Hopefully, I'll win one of them one day. Um, but yeah, no, it's really good. I'm really looking forward to kicking on over the next couple of years as well. Absolutely. Fantastic. Good. Good. And, and just on that, the double champs, I mean, obviously incredible, incredible season. I mean, how, how was, you know, how was that sort of finish to the, to the season? Obviously, you know, almost winning everything in sight and that culture of the club and the winning attitude. I mean, that's, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, it was great. I mean, obviously coming from Falcons, we just won the champ as well. So we was going from winning to then winning, winning bigger as well. So it was obviously a really good, um, experience as a whole, as a whole year and two years, whatever it was. Um, but no, it was really good. You know, everyone was had one dream. We all went for it. Uh, worked really hard, pushed each other, and yeah, hard work paid off. Brilliant. Yeah, it, it just mentioned. I, I know I mentioned earlier. I, I listened to Rob Baxter and the you know independent coach education had a seminar, and I listened to that. And um, gee, he sounded so impressive, and, and certainly. You'd follow him, uh, I think, wherever he would go. That's that's for sure. Just in the 40 minutes that, that I listened to me, he just came across as absolutely fans. Yeah, yeah Rob, Rob's a great man. Uh, he says things how it is, and he always looks to help you get better as well. Uh, he's a big part of the, the family and the, the community kind of thing. Um, he's all he's all for that winning mentality, and it's really good. Great. Ali, just to build on on uh, the Saracen stuff, so you've had a great time at Saris uh, and moving on to Pashtun's new uh, at the end of the season. But what would be the two or three things that you will remember Saracens for? So, like, they've got, as well as Exeter, I mean, they've had probably the best last, would we say, decade. Uh, and Exeter have come into the mix with that as two of the biggest powerhouse teams in in European, if not world rugby. So, so what would be the two or three big, big things that you'll take with you from your Saris journey? Um, I think the main one would be that, you know, like, like Hodgie said, it's like one big family and, you know, the importance of that, like going forward in terms of, you know, making sure, you know, everyone on and off the field on like a personal level, because that only like translates onto the pitch. Um, I think that's, that's a huge one. And I think, you know, this, this standard in training and the level you've got to be at. To, to kind of more survive and do well and succeed at Saris is I think a level that you, you know I wanted to always aspire to I think that's you know going there was it was a massive shock to my system just how you know how intense it is and you know what what's actually demanded when, not just from the coaches but from you know the senior players as well I think if I can take that kind of work ethic and and um, and that into into whatever I do whether it's in rugby or even after rugby like, I think that's um, be something that I take forward so Class. And then moving forward, that's exciting. So we're going to go to Wasps and, and have some fun. So so what was the sell? What what made you sort of think, actually, I really really want to mix it up and, and change the scenery and, and get out there? Yeah, I think, you know, like we said, I've had an amazing time at Saris. I think it's definitely time, I think, for me, on a, a, for change as well. I think, you know, um, 
ready for that new challenge. Um, and I think, you know, another big thing, speaking to Lee Blackett, um, was, you know, the option of playing fullback as well as wing. And I think that's something that definitely excites me. Um, you know, I've, I've obviously been on, on the wing for Saris quite a lot and, you know, I, I enjoy that a lot as well. But, you know, a new challenge as well at fullback and get my hands on the ball a bit more uh, is something that, you know, was, that really did jump out to me. Um, so, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to that. So. Good stuff. Hodgy, go on. So the last time you were on this, uh, on the, the webinar series one, I think it was in the first lockdown that we had, uh, you were a Falcons player. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, was the opportunity just too good to turn down? Is it what will you remember Newcastle for? I have always bet for Newcastle. I think Newcastle's a great club. Uh, they gave me that opportunity out of school. Um, but yeah, like you say, I just it was an opportunity. Like I saw the coaching staff, saw the level of players there, and I thought it was an opportunity for me to learn off a majority of people. So yeah, it was a no. It was like a no-brainer for me. Really, I really wanted to learn off. Like Stuart Hogg for the likes, or yeah, the players they had there were top class, and I think it was just a, another thing to add to me is just to learn off them. Yeah, you certainly wouldn't learn an awful lot off Sam Stewart, who's online tonight <laughs> trying to go you into some some, uh, cats, some stories. Yeah, hey, there's one Poelian that has let himself down in the last <laughs> few years. Yeah. No, I'm only joking, Sam. You're doing a great job at the minute as well. I can see you typing away, your little keyboard warrior. Um, but you are looking sharp, so well done to you and in, in, in your performance for the Falcons. And uh, I hope you you're doing well planning my brother's stag do. So may, maybe spend a bit more time doing that than pestering Hodgie on here. Um, we'll go to the Knox. You're happy to go to the question. The the yeah. questions in. I think the first one, Knox. Um, yep. I, I'll deflect over to you for, from the guys, and then we'll just work our way through the trough. Is yeah, um, sure. is around opportunity and unique opportunity. So, what is unique at Sedba for the players? So, from a playing perspective, uh, what's unique? What is um, the thing that will give them the best opportunity? So, yeah. So, boys, on that. So, you know, well, I guess it's a mess of both of you. But look, what would what would be the most unique opportunity that you, that you felt Sedba gave you during your time as? Um, I think that it's almost it's almost like the perfect step into a professional environment. I think with the way I'd say it, um, like you know, constant access to you know top quality coaching uh, and facilities and, and all that kind of thing. Um, I think that's what I, I, I loved about it. You know, like I remember doing kicking sessions with you. You know, in like a free period, which probably you know shouldn't have done in terms of should have been studying, but you know, like. Um, that kind of thing, just being able to have the, the ability to go do that and, and do that and, and in, in your spare time. And along with alongside that, you've got the, the analysis of the games. So it's like the first, you know, perfect step up into the professional environment. So that, that, that jump isn't as, as steep as it could be at other, other places. Um, I think that would be the one for me. Josh, anything for you? Yeah, I think... I think just touching on that, like the facilities and the, the level of coaching, and also like the the boys, they wanted to win. I think it was a mentality that was set in in the jersey. Um, it was like people would die for the jersey kind of thing. Like everyone was just wanting to just put that jersey on, get the white shorts, you know, and keep running out of bus comb. Um, I think that's an opportunity that a lot of people will look at and say they're thankful for that. Um, but yeah, it was, yeah. Really good opportunity. Brilliant, brilliant. With you both being elite rugby players, um, obviously, you know, been in the professional game now for, for a while. Was there any sort of mindset adjustments that, that you guys had to make uh, whilst you're at school in order to get you into that pro game? I think for me, I've I've always had that mindset of whatever I take part in, I want to be I want to try and be the best at it. Uh, whether it's football, athletics, shooting whatever apart from swimming I'm not regular swimming but yeah I think it was just that um it's always wanting to be the best it's kind of stood, stood out for me so yeah I think similar to Oji like you know it's not much of an adjustment like like I said I think Seba was like the perfect platform to go into professional like I think you know there's a few new challenges that are thrown at you in terms of like detail and like systems and stuff when you when you start professionally but 
in terms of mindset, like it's the reason, like the reason why we play is, you know, to that, that competitive edge and, you know, cause we, we love it. So that I wouldn't say there was a massive shift in mindset, um, you know, uh, from school to professional. Well, Knox, I've got, I've got a question here. There's a couple of people have asked the same question. Um, so, so Liam Kiernan and, and the captain of SSFC, Louis Johnson, has sort of asked, what are the, is there one or two major differences? What are the biggest differences then from, from schoolboy? So if mindset's not su- too big of a shift, what are the biggest differences from schoolboy into, into pro game? Um, I think well, initially, like pre-season, you know, you're going in and you might think you're, you're very fit, but you, you're definitely not in terms of what the levels they want in. So in terms of getting that, so body-wise adjusted to that, I think for me, like the biggest jump was just my body being able to cope with the demands that professional rugby had. I think, you know, we obviously train a lot at Sebba and, and at school and, you know, I, I think... There's, there's that element, but then there's the physicality element as well and being able to, like, you know, hold your own against players when you're, you know, nicest way possible, you're 18 years old and you've got players who are, you know, 28, 30, who know, you know, a lot more about the game than you do. And I think that that was something for me, body-wise, that just, you know, it's taken probably a couple of years to, to get where I needed to. And I think in order to not get frustrated, you've got to be patient, which I probably wasn't at the time. Like I think Hodge, you mentioned it earlier, like, you know, you, have, you can play through little niggles and, and that kind of thing which you know looking back is that was that the wisest decision for me probably not um just having that patience would have probably been been, been better for me um yeah I think that, that that would be a key thing for me um yeah and like I said like systems and you know detail wise it's it's a, there is a big big jump in terms of that but you know you pick things up quickly once you're in the environment so Hodgie yeah, I think everything is just a lot more, a lot more precise. You know, you've got you've got to be sharper. Um, you know, you've got to you've got to perform week in week out. It's not really, uh, you can't really have like an off week. Um, decisions can go either way, but like also on that with what Ali said about looking after your body. And through said, but I just wanted to play rugby, and I wasn't thinking about my body so much. I'd just I'd go through the little niggles, and I'd probably make them worse. But I'll put myself on the pitch at the end of the day. But yeah, coming into that 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 pro setup, so coming out of that England camp as well with George Ford, which made me realise that I probably shouldn't have played on uh, just for my body. But now I've got got around it, I've sorted everything out, and yeah, it's just looking after your body and making sure your your knowledge, you're always learning. That's the big part. Yeah, I think it's really good advice, uh, Josh, for young players that like we hit. We um, there's a a, a wee period there, or quite a long period actually, where you know you would have Monday, Tuesday off um, after yeah. a game to try and get you ready um, for that for that next week's game because you you know you were pretty pretty sore. Um, I think you you did very well in a, in a national athletics event, didn't you? Which uh, which we probably played yeah. Advice on, but um, yeah, but it is what it is. You know, I always wanted to play every sport, and that was one thing I I don't regret is I I had got myself involved in everything. Uh, it probably didn't help going from a solid surface to a a bus comb on a wet Wednesday surface. But um, no, Roger, yeah. you've gone so professional and elitist now. You know, <laughs> you've gone from a hard surface to a soft surface. Mate, even the running track at Sedbro was soft, <laughs> as well as bus. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, just saying, just look after your body. Yeah. I think that's great really... advice. And there's lots of questions here around what what advice would you give or if you could change one thing and go back and do some stuff, but, you know, listen to your body, you know, work on some of the stuff and, and learn about other ways and means to, to look after yourself. Um, so that'll cover a, a couple of questions there. And I think it's a real lesson to, to most people. Um, bum, bum, bum. So going from age grade rugby through to senior rugby over the previous five years, is there anything you would have done differently or concentrated on? And if so, what and why? So I'm going to flip that on its head and ask you if you could ask a question of your school coach or your club coach back home, or if you could break a rule or change something or do something differently, what would you do and why? So what are you thinking, Al? 
Oh, I'll ask you. I'll ask you as a, as a coach. I'm going to flip it on to you. Set yourself up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, mate, good, good flip. Well done. I'll give you that one. Um, so as a coach, I would have... Um, it, see, we're coming from different eras, so there's a lot of coach education gone on from uh, my start out in coaching to, to what coaching looks like now. And I would have probably liked to have thought of the game a little bit more as a coach. So as a player, I would love to have thought about the game more. So I would love to have you know, got stuck into some tactics more. And that would come from very much a, a sort of game-based scenario training session as opposed to a, a tell, tell, tell. So I had some incredible figures in my my junior rugby growing up. But it was it would be descri described and, and classed as old school. Uh, and, you know, run hard, uh, hit hard, keep going, work harder than everyone else. And, um, yeah, I think I, think I would have just maybe appreciated a little bit more understanding. So search for some more clarity. Does that answer it? I've, I've cool. scooted around that. Yeah, I hope you well. put Noxy on the spot as well. <laughs> no, 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 you've answered How'd it. Hodgie can, Hodgie can. Yeah. Uh, right, Hodgie, no, if you had a magic wand, would you change anything about Knox or any of the other coaches? Would, would you have broken a rule or, or said, I'd love to have done some more of this? Um... A tough one. I think if I had the time again, I'd probably I'd have probably done more skill sessions. I always used to do the kicking, which I love love kicking. But I'd have probably taken my time as well as doing the kicking is to do more skill sessions. So I think this day and age, a lot of rugby is based around skills. I think when not so long ago, it was probably about more about size, and it's going to go that way. But I think. At the moment, I think no matter what size you are, I think your skill level's still got to be up there. So I'd, I'd say always go for skills over weight. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Knox, have you got any questions for the boys or do you want me to crack on? I think we can crack on. I think a couple uh, may have been answered already. I mean, both house, both boys from Pole House um, obviously enjoyed the time there, boys. Yeah, I loved that. Yeah, cool. cool. Perfect. No, I think crack on, Jason. Yeah, cool, mate. Um, and three lads from Paul House. Thanks, Knox. Apologies. <laughs> it's okay, I'm not that old. I'm not that old. Um, this is a really important question, and we touched on this before. It's around Plan B. So, you know, best of luck with your rugby career. We hope you get your cap. We hope you have a long and distinguished career. But what have you got planned for after it? So, um, you know, what are you doing now to prepare you for life after rugby? So, Ali, you're just about to finish your university. Hodgie, you've started and made a decision to park it for now, which is a really good decision because you've got a, a huge opportunity down at Exeter. But do you want to just talk about the importance of having something else to, to run alongside it at the same time? Uh, yeah, I think not just not just obviously for after and, and all that kind of thing. I think, you know, just mentally and during, during my career, like, you know, I found that actually a relief, like as much as I sometimes moan about studying and hate it and that kind of thing. But like, I think having that other focus has really helped me on the pitch as well. Like I think, especially like during lockdown and, and, you know, before that as well, like, you know, you might have had a, well, we have a lot of free time as a rugby player. And I think, you know, as much as I love like Call of Duty and that kind of thing with the boys and stuff, but I think, you know, it's, it's so important to have that other focus to keep your mind active and, um and do that and I think yeah touch wood I get managed to graduate in summer um all being well um so I think yeah again I, I'll probably will look to do something else after after I finish that just to keep myself going um but yeah I think again and the importance after after rugby is you know you know anything can happen so uh, it's good to have that back up yeah cool and also you interestingly you talk about there you know to give you some breathing space so instead of it being 100% yeah. rugby, 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 you know, some breathing space away, meet new people at university, uh, direct some energy into something completely different, that helps you perform. Is that what you're saying? So that helps you sort of have a break and a respite to help you perform the next day of training? Or Yeah, I, I think, yeah, but more, yeah, mentally as well. I think, you know, it keeps you that have that love of the game. I think if you become obsessed with it, then, you know, at some point, you're going to fall out of love. And I think, you know, I, I definitely had in my first year, 
I didn't do uni, I had a year out and I think, you know, there was times when I just became like obsessive about like what, you know, rugby, what's going on in the rugby world. And, you know, I don't think I was enjoying it as much as I have since, like since starting uni, because just to have that break and, you know, it puts things into perspective that, you know, like if you've not got picked to the weekend, you know, you can, you know, focus on something else for that week and still achieve something rather than just get downbeat about it, um, not being picked kind of thing. So um, I think that's why it's been good for me. So, Nox, just to come at you with that, actually, just, just, just before we go back to Hodgie, we, are we seeing a lot of boys from Sedba now using university as a genuine route into the professional game? Absolutely. Yeah, it's... um. It's really taken off, I, I, I guess, probably the last um, 10 years in particular, especially with the Bucks League, the Bucks Super League um, starting up and we're just becoming a lot stronger. And, you know, a lot of guys now are um, getting picked from the University of Texas the professional game. Um, you know, a lot of those those Bucks Super League games are live streamed. There's a lot of exposure for those young players now and, and you're getting a degree alongside really good top quality rugby. So... It's a win-win. Um, we're lucky at Seba, you know, that we've got great contacts with, with all the, the Bucks universities and um, they love our players. So, look, the opportunities now are endless for, to, to do both an amazing degree and, and, and get great rugby, which is, you know, a great opportunity for young men and, and women. And, and, and Ali, you just talked about, uh, I don't know whether it was in this chat or just before it, about, you know, you're in the Ealing Cup next week. So Ealing yeah. have set the bar high in terms of university places, high quality rugby and all the other bits. So there is a there is another route other than just, you know, academy, school, post-18 yeah. stuff. And that's something to, to consider. Hodgie, you've part university, which is fine and a sensible decision for you, but you've started it and it's something to go back to. Um, but I'm going to ask you another question. And then Nox, you can can jump in uh, to give me a break. How do, how do you go about? So what advice would you give around making a good first impression? So you think about your time at, at school, think about your time at the Falcons, think about your time at Exeter. So what do you think the key ingredients are to making the first, you know, real solid impression? Um, I think always always try your hardest. Um, always giving it your all, um, you know, being keen, like asking questions, wanting to learn, putting yourself out there, um, make mistakes. It's nothing wrong with making mistakes, you know, it just gives you that fuel to learn. Um, that's one thing I did is that I, I didn't change who I was when I went for a Falcons trial. I just did me. I didn't go and try and do the spin passes or anything special. I just did me. And I think if you try your hardest and you have fun, you smile and you be confident in your ability, you'll, you'll do just fine. Anything to add, Al? No, I agree with that. I think, you know, smile and just just give it your all. I think, you know, no one no one can have a go at you for, for trying too hard. So I think, um, yeah, just whatever you're doing, just, just go hard at it and, and, um, and enjoy it while you're doing it. I think it gets you along a lot further than, you know, overthinking stuff and, and um yeah, that, that kind of thing. I think that's that's a good answer. Noxie, just to a coach then, to you, because you'll see a lot of boys that want to make a good first impression. But what would be the things that you, you would look for as, as somebody casting an eye? Um, well, the, the person's a big part of it. You know how they are, how they act around their teammates and their peers. You know, that's always a big one. Um, work ethic is, is massive now. You know, talent. We, we all know it and have seen it. Talent will only get you so far and you've got to be able to work hard and um, and work while, uh, you know, it's easy to work when everyone's watching, um, maybe when you're doing it out on your own or not as many numbers around you, that's um, a little bit tougher. So, yeah, look, but, but just being a, teammate, being a good person, being um, open to learn, take feedback on board, you know, all, all really good parts of, of being a young rugby player, whether that's elite, whether that's participation, you know, um, I think the boys have nailed it there, you know, look, whatever impression you give, you know, if you've got a smile on your face and you're enjoying it, you're going to give it your all and you're going to, you're going to have a good time. And that's, that's a, a key part of it. You know, a few messages have come up on the board about what, what advice would, would these guys give younger players? I think it's enjoying your rugby, is it not? Guys, yeah, I think, you know. And not just rugby, I think, you know, other sports as well. Like if you just do what you're enjoying and that helps so much. Absolutely. Cool. 
Uh, okay, I've got one for you here, guys. What does a, a sort of a normal day look like for you guys? So if you can run us through uh, in your professional environment, what, 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 what's involved in that day? Whether it be gym sessions, you know, what time are we starting? What, what happens in a normal day? Hodge. Um, so I guess roughly you wake up around seven-ish. You know, you'll have your breakfast. You'll probably go into the club, have a few meetings, um, have a gym session, maybe another meeting, you know, um, play some rugby, a bit of gym, and then recovery. Um, that's a pretty, pretty standard day. Obviously, you've got your food slots in between each session, depending on what, what where's where. And, um, yeah, and then home or back to your house, back to your house with the boys, academy houses, wherever you go. Um, have your food, play some Xbox, uh, chill out, sleep. Ali, similar for you? Yeah, very similar. Yeah, very similar. So, um, yeah, the only thing that changes would be like the intensity of training different days. So, yeah, for us, it's like Monday is a bit more detail and, and less and more just, you know, learning what's, what's in prep for the week. And then Tuesday, be a lot quicker and more intense, more like a game. And then Wednesday off, Thursday, captain's running and Friday off and play on the Saturday. So that's the only thing that really changes. And guys, we're lucky, been well, been lucky enough, I guess, to have a lot of players have gone on to, to play professional international level from Sydney. You know, has, has a Will Greenwood or, um, you know, Will Carling, for example, um, anyone been in touch with you guys, you know, throughout your journey? Uh, so Will was in camp for when I was in there. So he's the does a bit of psychology stuff there, and you know, we, yeah, we had a bit of a chat, and you know, he's, he was just reminiscing of some separate days as well. So that that was nice, and you know, it's a good good to have that OS network, and you know, everyone knows kind of everyone what's going on with other people. So you know, like we were talking about it earlier, you know, Jimbo doing so well, and with Wales, and you know, it's so it's good to see. So yeah, it's it's a nice network. Fantastic. Good. And just continue on that sort of Seba theme with the questions here. Like what, what would set um, the playing environment at Seba apart from any of the other squads that you've been involved in, whether it be development, whether it be um, professional side of things? You know, what, what was the biggest thing that you enjoyed uh, about the Seba environment during your time at school? Hodgie? Uh, just, just how close we were as a bunch. Uh, we, could just, we could all just be who we were. Um, we all know at the end of the week we're going to put that jersey on hopefully if you were picked and go out and have a have a good game and probably learn from it as well yeah I think that and you know just how competitive it was you know Hodgie mentioned it earlier like you know everyone wants to win we want to win every every year and you know every year is judged on how many undefeated seat well whether it's an undefeated season or not I think that's something I loved and you know always will love that competition and that side of it so Perfect. Okay. You happy, happy not? Yep. As um, we, we will draw it to a close uh, just because I can't wait to get stuck into the after party. But, I mean, it goes without saying. Um, thanks again to both Josh and Ali and for you, Simon. Um, it's a great insight into the world of, you know, professional rugby. Uh, and not just that, it, it's, it's the world that, lies below it so you know the people that just love the game and love hearing the fact that you you know you come in and representing real rugby clubs in the community um you're then sort of representing one of the biggest um in terms of reputation rugby playing schools in the country and, and you're still two great lads you deserve all the luck in the world moving forward um and we'll be watching and, and cheering you on at the telly i'm, I'm sure not yeah, oh, we're incred incredibly proud, boys. And, um, you know, Ali, for you, look, we can't wait to see you back on the field and really yeah. excited about um, seeing you play. And, and Josh, just keep doing what you're doing. You know, good things are going to happen. And, yeah, we're just, just really, really proud and just so excited every time we turn on the TV to watch, you know, watch your journey. So keep doing it, boys. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we'll follow guys. up with um, a clip of the the webinar tonight if you've missed any stuff i'm sorry if we've missed some questions on the side it was it was quite relentless and i'm i'm hoping you can pick some answers out to answer the majority of questions but if there is anything burning do feel free to send us an email and and we'll get ali josh and simon to to send some thoughts back with any other additional questions um and, and 
enjoy the rest of your week. Hope it, hopefully this was a spring in your step for a Monday. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, guys.